Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to dig into the new workspace experience. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, the new workspace experience. It was GA'd in April, and there's a lot of stuff that comes with it. There's some changes that come with it. And I just wanna walk you through what those changes are, maybe how it's gonna impact your workflow and just how to take advantage of those new workspaces themselves and also talk about what's coming for it. All right, enough of this talking. Let's head over to my laptop and see how this works. All right, so we are starting in the Power BI service and we'll come down and look at workspaces and we'll see that we have workspaces available to us. What I'm gonna start with is creating a new app workspace. So if I go and hit create, one thing you'll notice is that the default experience is the new workspace experience. You do have an option of reverting to classic. So what does revert to classic do? The new workspace experience does not create that Office 365 modern group, which means that it's not gonna show up in places that you may expect. So like Microsoft Teams or Outlook or OneDrive or those areas of Office 365 that took advantage of that Office 365 modern group. The new workspace experience is an independent item inside of Power BI. And so if we revert to classic, it's going to actually create the old workspace experience, which does create that Office 365 modern group, which means it will create, it will show up in Teams and Outlook and OneDrive, all of those things that you may have been used to. All right, let's just go ahead and create a workspace and see what happens. So we will just call it new workspace and there are a couple things under advanced that I wanna call out. So first is a contact list. So the contact list is going to, by default, be the workspace admins, but you can specify a set of users and groups. As of the recording of this video, this contact list will be used for any notifications related to the workspace. In the future, this will actually show up as a list that people can discover who to contact for that workspace if they need to reach out. The other item you're gonna notice here is the Workspace OneDrive or SharePoint. We'll come back to that in a second. So let's just go ahead and save this. So we'll create the new workspace. And we will see that this workspace shows up. And when we go to it, you'll see that I don't have any content. So let's just go ahead and add something in here real quick. One of our trusty samples. All right, we've got content. So it's a workspace, right? We see our dashboards, reports, workspace data sets and data flows. That's great. We also have some options up on the top. So we can do settings, we have access. If we are a member or an admin, we can publish the app. All of that is as expected. So let's go over to, let's go take a look at some of the other options here. So for new workspace, if I hit the ellipse, we'll see that we just have access to workspace settings and workspace access. If we look at the old workspaces, Again, these are the ones that created that Office 365 Modern Group. You will see more items there, so files, members, calendar. That's because of that Office 365 integration. The other side of this is true as well. So if I create a team in Microsoft Teams, it will create the old workspace experience because it was tied to that Office 365 Modern Group. It will not create a new workspace because the new workspace is just a Power BI element. It's not backed by that Office 365 Modern group experience. And so once the old experience of the workspaces go away, when you create a team in Microsoft Teams, you would not see a workspace show up in Power BI. But just know as of the recording of this, the old experience is still in play. And so creating a team in Microsoft Teams will still create a workspace in Power BI for now. You may be familiar with the fact that in order to access an app workspace, you have to have a pro license. From a Power BI desktop perspective, when you tried to publish a report to an app workspace, the actual license enforcement didn't take place. With the new workspace, it is enforced. So if you try to publish a Power BI report to an app workspace and you don't have a pro license, you will now get a message saying you don't, you need a pro license to do it. This is not being enforced for the old workspace experience at the time of this recording. That may change in the future once folks have been able to mitigate whatever may happen as a result of that. So just be aware of that. If you're doing a new workspace experience, you need a pro license, whether you're publishing from desktop or you're doing it from app.powerbi.com. One of the more awesome aspects of the new workspace experience is that I'm not limited to just adding individual users like I was with the old experience. That was actually a limitation of the Office 365 Modern Group. And now that we're not tied to that, I can actually add groups. So I can do security groups. I can do all of that. So let's take a look at that. 
So if I go to access for the new workspace, I can come in and basically I can add in anything here. So let's try and add in adventure work. So this is an Office 365 modern group. So now I can add individuals, I can add security groups, mail enabled security groups, distribution lists, and Office 365 modern groups. So this is great. So now I can just have a security group with all the people that need to have access and then I can add that in. From an access perspective, so we added that Office 365 modern group in there and we also mentioned that we can add in security groups, mail enabled security groups, distribution lists, all of that stuff. The other thing to realize is that there's different access for the given workspace. So we have admin, member, and contributor. Admin has full control over the app workspace. Member has the ability to publish content. It also has the ability to publish the app. The contributor will have access to publish content to the workspace, but they do not have access to publish or update the app. One thing you see missing here also is the reader role. That is one thing that is coming. So stay tuned on information for that. All right, let's go back and see how we can integrate OneDrive and SharePoint with the new workspace experience. So if I go back into settings, and come down to advanced and we have workspace onedrive or sharepoint so here i can actually list out an office 365 modern group and this will associate the new workspace with the onedrive or sharepoint storage and so let me go ahead and type one in so we got contoso so this is an office 365 modern group i'm going to hit save now when i do that let's go ahead and refresh to make sure it picks up the menu items so when I do that, I come to workspaces. And if I go to new workspaces, I will now see files available for me in the new workspace experience. And this will take me to that OneDrive item or SharePoint site that's associated with the Office 365 modern group. And this will happen if you create it in Teams or something like that. The other spot you'll see too is if I go to get data and go to files, you will now see that show up from a OneDrive perspective so we can add files from that OneDrive. It'll do the syncing like it used to with the old workspace experience. So you can actually align these up. One thing to consider though, is that the security access for the new workspace experience is not synced with that Office 365 modern group. So you need to be aware of that. One thing you could do to just make sure that everything lines up is we could come back to access and I can add in that Contoso Office 365 Modern Group and just add it as a member, contributor, whatever it is that you wanted to do, and then bam. Now, anyone that's added to that Office 365 Modern Group from a OneDrive or Teams perspective will now be able to get to that app workspace. So that's a way that you could keep them in sync. With the GA of the new workspace experience, you also have access to usage metrics for dashboards and reports. So if we go into a report, come into that and then we can actually see usage metrics here. Yay. And then when you select that, it'll go ahead and kick it off for the first time. And then you can go in and view those metrics as you normally would. This one doesn't have anything because I just turned it on. So be aware that that is now available as well. All right, from an administration perspective, let's look at a few things that are available for admin. So if I go into the admin portal and we go to tenant settings, one thing you'll see here is we do have a tenant-wide setting for creating workspaces. So as a Power BI admin, we can actually control who can create those workspaces. By default, this setting is gonna go off of the permissions to create Office 365 modern groups. So you're gonna to wanna to come in here and set this up. By default, it's gonna be for the entire organization, or you can say specific security groups. So we know that certain folks in our organization can create workspaces inside of Power BI. This is specific to that new workspace experience. I mentioned before that the old workspace experience is still there as of the recording of this video. So at some point that will go away and then this will only apply to the new workspace experience. So just be aware we're still in that transition period, but this is a way to control the new workspace experience. For the old workspace experience, you would still control it with that Office 365 Modern Group permission. The other thing admins can do here is if we go to workspaces in the admin portal, you can actually see uh, the given workspaces that are available to you. Change the sort order here, you'll see group. So groups are the old workspace experience. And then if we come back in and we sort the other way, workspaces are the new workspace experience. And for the new workspace experience, we'll actually see items in here like details, access, edit, recovery, You'll notice if I go back to the old workspace experience that 
I have limited options there. I can just see details because that's controlled by the Office 365 Modern Group. So if you wanna handle the new workspaces, you can do that easily inside of the admin portal. As an admin, we can access all the workspaces and control them from that perspective, regardless of whether you're an admin of the actual workspace or not. All right, let's take a look at what's coming for the new workspace experience. So these are items that are gonna be coming at some point after the recording of this video. The first item is the reader role. I already mentioned that from a security perspective. So that will be available at some point after GA. The other item that will be coming is the ability to migrate an old workspace to the new workspace experience. And so that will also be something that will come down the line. So stay tuned to Guy in a Cube and also stay tuned to the Power BI blog for announcements on that. All right, whew, that was a lot of stuff. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite aspect of the new workspaces are. I would love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.